Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Time to test fit. It's kind of like threading a needle in a hurricane. Hours have passed. Hmm. But if you're out there and you're fighting that battle, it, it's happening to everybody. So some of you folks at home might suddenly think that I might be avoiding something. We straightened this up, kind of. We cleaned all of this up. Built this in the rain. We even hung up some lights in the shop that don't really even work. Although that shark does look pretty cool right now. So may maybe I have been avoiding this. So we are a little bit in the hot rod doldrums with this thing. Fun fact. The doldrums are actually a condition that exists. North winds meet the south winds and sailing ships would get stuck in the doldrums because, well, they'd cancel each other out and there'd be no wind. Let's say, hypothetically, you're not working on your project. Instead, you're on the internet looking at projects available for sale in your area. I know you do it. We all do it. And you come across those ones where somebody sells something like this and they say, most of the hard work is done. Well, they're, they're lying. It was a lot of hard work to get here, but it's still not anywhere near all the hard work that needs to be done. We have got to get in there and build a pedal assembly, which it's kind of like threading a needle in a hurricane. The task itself has its difficulties and its challenges, except everything that's going on around it is well, it's what, it complicates the situation. So right here, this side, driver's side, that's where all the action is, right? Car's not going anywhere without you. It's a partnership, it's a team effort. But that means all of your controls have to exist right here. And it's like, oh, what's the problem? They always used to exist there. It's still a car, right? Of course, of course, of course. But what we have is a Model A frame with a Model T body. And we have just put in an engine and a transmission that is not only wider, but also longer. And this transmission has the shifting mechanisms, me mechanisms, mechanisms on the side rather than through the top, like a, well, Model A transmission or a top loader forward, which is sort of the original style of hot rodification that would happen in these cars. A little sketched out by the word traditional. It's not, we gotta, it's, it's, there's a lot to unpack there. We don't have time for that today. Not only do we need to squeeze the pedal assembly in, both brake and clutch, Kind of in the general area where it used to go, we're also adding hydraulic brakes. Don't forget that your typical Model A was indeed built with mechanical brakes. Now we have opted to go through the floor. I'm gonna use this master cylinder with this power booster if I can fit it because I already had it. That can be 86 and we can just bolt the master cylinder straight to the bracket if we decide this setup is not what we want to run. But, we have got to get the pedals, generally speaking, where our feet go. That's about all the information I have for you on that. And then we have to be able to mash that lever, preferably mechanically, with our clutch. So our starting point is something I already have, which does have a pedal, which I've pulled off. And then, dun -dun -dun -dun, I bought another one. And I bought another one because these come with only one pedal. And I thought, well, this is actually a pretty darn nice pedal. I think it's quarter inch. It's got a bushing. It fits the thingy. This is solid rod that's been drilled out and tapped, which I kind of like. It's got a little hole in it. Comes with a banjo fitting with a zerk and all that jazz. That's a pretty styling setup. But it doesn't matter if you're trying to be cool and you got an F1 setup or an early 32 setup as a pedal assembly What I mean is what I mean. When I say setup, I mean assembly in this particular case. You're still gonna have to make it work. Everything we need to do is crammed right in here. <sighs> On a good day, I think, I think it's a half day project. In reality, it is probably gonna be like a two day project if, if, if I can make these contraptions fit in here. Skeeters, I'll tell you what. Speaking of not fitting what we need, this 98.673257% sure, I believe, was built and marketed as 
a Model A kind of bolt-in power brake kit. And I'm certain that it works, but I don't know with what engine and transmission combination. I would assume small block 350 with a 350 transmission. I'm just saying where, where this thing places the pedal, it doesn't fit against this much narrower four speed. So just, you know, it's hot riding. It's not supposed to come out of a kit or anything. I mean, there are certain things where it's really helpful to start with something uh, because we're reinventing the whole wheel here. What we're doing with any of this is not new. People have been taking Model T's and putting them on Model A chassis and putting small block Chevys in them since the 1950s. And the four speeds came around in like the 1960s. None of that is new. Hours have passed. We have cogitated, we have ruminated, we have stared at it real hard. Hmm. And we've consulted the dog. All in hopes of coming up with the best way to modify this bracket to fit not one pedal, but two pedals. And then it came to me. We're not gonna do anything. I mean, we gotta do something, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna start cutting and hacking on this yet. First things first, let's see if we can jam this thing in and make the brake pedal even kind of work. Prove that a below the floorboard pedal assembly is gonna work at all. And then, and then we'll figure out how to do a second pedal. It took me hours, guys. Moments in YouTube time. Hours of thinks spent to get there. All right, so we gotta get this thing into the vehicle and see what it does, uh, which means I've gotta find clamps. I buy clamps like, three times a week, and uh, I still never have enough and can never find them. I believe we've got a clamp burglar running amok in the neighborhood. Uh, I wonder what it would be like to have a hobby like a uh, needle point or something where you can kind of reach the thing you're actually trying to work on, you know? Why we're here to find problems. Potentially, eventually, solutions, but not yet. Got to give it the old reach around, apparently. Whoa. New competition, one-hand seat clamping contest. No. That puts the pedal in a real awkward position. Let me tell you what. So if you're good at, like, putting your knee up under your neck, then this might be a pretty effective pedal position for you. Me, on the other hand, I'd like to be able to reach the brake in an emergency, you know? Put my foot on it, even. Anyway, let's let's do our favorite thing and stare at it and think. All right, so imaginarily, yeah, I got my Doc Martens and Dickie shorts like uh, like we're about to go see Pearl Jam. You know what I'm saying? This is about where our gas pedal wants to be, which means our brake pedal. It's not that far off, but that's our ending point, not our starting point. Starting point somewhere way back here, so that's a little crazy. Because my knee will get stuck under the steering wheel. Try to so that's not gonna do. It's kind of a it's it's kind of a crazy pedal shape for what we're doing here. I know it's probably similar-ish to 40s Ford pedal stuff, probably even a 32 assembly, and probably even an F1 assembly, but it's not gonna do what we need it to do. You can tell by Looking at it right there and how it's not doing it. Sounds like someone is pouring a bucket of ball bearings on the roof. Yeah, no, I, I can't, I can't hear you. I can't, I can't hear you. Good news is the rain is finally kind of let up. Bad news is I left the windows down on about everything I own. Uh-huh, even our brand new interior. Dang it. The relationship of this poodle snapper to this poodle snapper is important. When this thing is straight up and down, off the bottom of our pivot point. We want that to be basically the center of travel for the amount we need to push the brake booster in or just the master cylinder if you don't have a booster. So that means with this arrangement, our pedal setup is kind of at neutral right jumper. So now it's time to take a look to see what that relationship means for us here in the vehicle. 
So if the pedal comes up to its neutral position here, it's pretty much unusable the way that it is. Now, if we drop the pedal down, our alignment will be all kind of wackadoo from the pivot point on the bottom of the pedal to the rod going into the brake booster or master cylinder, depending on your setup. Let's talk about how pedals work and pedal ratio and all that stuff in case you're not familiar and so that I can re-familiarize myself. A pedal like this is nothing more than a bell crank or a lever and a lever. So this is a pivot point. The ratio is the distance from where you push to the center of the pivot point to where it pushes from the center of the pivot point. So you divide this number by this number, that's your ratio. It does not matter what this cockamamie shape is, what we're dealing with is rotational stuff, which means we're basing everything off the pivot point in a straight line out to the edge of our circle. In this case, that's 12 inches, that's two inches, this is a six to one pedal ratio. What I also believe that means is we need this to rotate six inches to get one inch of travel out of this. So I went to Speedway's website because I'm pretty sure this is basically where it came from. That master cylinder has a stroke of an inch and an eighth. So we want about an eighth of free play on there. So from the beginning to the end, we are looking at an inch and a quarter, an inch, an inch, an inch and a quarter worth of travel. And that is here. We need an inch and a quarter from here to here. If this is, you know, if this is our vertical line on the vehicle here, the goal is to have the middle of the travel be right here on this arc. So we have no binding. So we're traveling from here roughly to here. So I drew a vertical line right here. I made a little X and I'm putting my pivot point. There it is. So got center line marked there because we are lined up at the center of our travel. We need to go five eighths more this way. And then when the pedal gets all the way returned to zero, we're gonna go five eighths back the other way, giving us an inch and a quarter of travel. So if we rotate to that point, we know this line through our pivot is going to be our stop here. And if we rotate back and line our rod up with this other mark here, can connect those guys. Have no fear, the 10 piece math set I bought at Target is here. All right, not only did I graduate from the kindergarten, but I also excelled in the arts and crafts. All right, so we're gonna set this piece of precision equipment at two inches. Well, that just didn't work at all. Dang it, that's our travel. That's really kind of basically it. You know, think of it more centered on this line here, but that's as far as we've got to go. What does it all mean? We've got our pivot down here set at its starting point. So if we mark where our pedal is in relation to that guy right yonder, I don't even know where, where to put you guys right now. Now we've rotated to our ending point. This is our travel of our pedal. I mean, the correct way to do this really is circumference math, but the short version is, this is essentially moving six times the distance that this is moving, give or take, because our pedal ratio is six to one. It's not, that's not exact mathematics, I don't think. Now that I'm thinking about my geometry. Well, maybe, because it's both degrees of a circle, an arc, as it were. Guys, we're thinking too hard about this. Practically applied, the pedal is going to go from here to here. The shape of it doesn't make any difference. We could create a straight line from here to here, and this would be our travel. And that's kind of what it feels like we need to do in order to make this work in our vehicle. So I feel like we're in an acceptable-ish place for the pivot point. So now we got to modify our pedal to work more better in this situation. All right, gang, before I get too far along into modifying everything and confusing everybody, 
let me do some explaining about how it would have been back in the when it would have been original. This is my demonstration floorboard. So what we have here is a 1946 front floor pan and toe board, right? This bolts in, it's removable, it's by design that way. These are the three holes for your pedal. Your accelerator linkage goes through here, your brake pedal came through here, and your clutch pedal came through here, right? So the idea was that that was your starting point, and then as the pedal traveled, it hit the floor, okay? Just want everybody to kind of understand the idea because, come back around to this side, fellers. Watch what I'm doing here. That essentially explains the shape and the length and everything else about the way this aftermarket pedal has been manufactured. So it's very similar to F1 pedal assemblies or 32 pedal assemblies are basically all early pedal assemblies. Now, in this particular car, I went ahead and just put the pedal back on the original assembly thing. That's roughly, you know, with the clamp on it, holding it up, that's roughly its starting pedal position. Now, everything is further back because I want to try to run this power booster, but my four-speed linkage is all kinds in the way if I run this thing forward. I've done something else for you fellas here. So on a Model T, this bracket right here, this piece of triangular whatever, is actually where the original tow board would sit. It would sit right in this groove and there would be one on the other side and that's where the front wooden piece of the floor would go. Pedals would come up through that. I removed these on my Model Ts because this couple inches of width is really important to me. And I can create a tow board angle that's anything that I want and I try to increase cabin space as much as possible. So originally, the seats were pretty tufted and high and the steering wheels were a little bit more racked up. They, they sat a little bit more vertically. I prefer to sit more in it than on top of it, if I can, while I'm building a hot rod. So I remove all this bracketries, yoink, and instantly I've got a little bit more room over here. My passenger's got a little bit more room and then I build my floor to suit myself. So. Those are all of the factors that are causing us to need to build another sort of different pedal assembly that works best for the ergonomics of this car with all of the extra equipment. Plus, we need a clutch pedal too. And this setup is not, that doesn't, that's not a thing. Now that we have Arts and Crafts us a uh, brand new pedal assembly, I left this on here because the clocking is going to probably be different and we can mark that as we go. Let's jam it in there and see how we're doing here. I've been at it for hours. Okay. Hours. Moments in YouTube time. If we trim this poodle snapper off so this was our pedal surface, that wouldn't be a terrible starting point. I'll call this vertical in line with that little hole. Ten piece math set coming to the rescue again. I plopped it on our little thingamadoodle that we made here. Like a 40 degree swing ish. So in theory, we can roughly adjust that and then mark a 40 degree swing. All right, so these two red marks, that's essentially the full amount of travel we need. If you look at that little dot on the top, that's my reference point to here. That's 40 degrees of travel, which at two inches gives us the throw we need on the bottom and all of that razzmatazz. Now, we can shorten this. The distance from the center of this to this is ultimately what creates our ratio. And we can decrease all of that. But when we do, the pedal should get harder. The shorter and shorter we get, the less leverage we have. But obviously this isn't gonna work, so we're gonna 86 this for now, and then move it around, see what else we get. Just a little off the top. Arts and crafts, arts and crafts, everybody's doing arts and crafts. All right, here's what arts and crafts has taught us today. So this would be the sort of the stopping point here, and then, 
this would be the starting point of the pedal. You know what's kind of crazy? We're still pretty close to a six to one pedal ratio. That's the world up. See my new pointer? Oh. And what you can see is this is our up position and then we rotate to our down position here. Then I split that in half and I transfer both of these marks to the other side of our pivot point. And what it looks like to me is we need to clock our pedal. This little doodad needs to cruise over to here so that this is the starting point. So we either need to cut this tab off or need to cut this whole lever off and change their relationship to each other based on what we determined for our car and our very specific hot rotitude that we have going on. Well, time just flies when you're having fun. So it's morning, bright and early, got a cup of little brown dog coffee. Check this out, if I move, it's like, it's like, That gave it up remarkably easily. Heat check. Yep, still hot. Ah. Nope. Not everybody's really great with their circle math. The goal here is to get this hole two inches on center from this hole, and that will maintain all of our relationships. Now, if it gets a fuzz shorter, that will increase our ratio. If it gets a fuzz longer, that will decrease our ratio. The smaller the ratio, the harder the pedal, but the less everything's gotta travel, you know what I'm saying? All right. Yep, yep, mm-hmm. Gotta clean your glasses every once in a while there, gang. All kind of schmutz gets on there. How we doing? How are you gonna weld quarter inch plate? Well, there's a lot of ways to do it with a lot of different equipment, but you and your Toys R Us 110 welder can do it. You basically have to grind all this down kind of into the shape of a chisel. You're not welding quarter inch plate in one pass. You're gonna do multiple passes with thin metal, hopefully meeting thin metal. The problem we have here though is we ain't got a lot of metal to work with. We're gonna, we'll figure it out. I feel confident enough in my abilities. Why am I bothering to explain it to you? You're gonna see it. Sometimes I gotta talk myself through it. So thanks for being there for me, fellas. Yes, a grinder and a flap wheel would work just as well, if not better. But we got the thing, right? Viola gang. We now have a genuine thing holder. All right, we got all our bits and pieces fastened to our Carl Fisher approved make it custom jig. See, we got this hammer here holding it level. Just teasing, that guy's really, really good. We're gonna go ahead and tack this together uh, and just tack it, cause there's, you know, like a slim chance we're gonna be right on our first go and there's like heaps of ways we're probably gonna be wrong. Installations of your Universal Pedal Assembly Step 82C, Subsection B. Now that you have turned it from two pieces back into one piece, cut it in a more different place to turn it back into two pieces. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Time to test fit. That's kind of the up position. I think we're in the ballpark, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Come on. Do your thing. Gang, I've got this sinking feeling and I've been trying not to think it out loud, but I've got this weird feeling that I'm gonna be needing to tilt this up just a little bit. I mean, it just, it's just a little tight on the knees. And uh, I don't know how much work that is, but it's more than I wanna do after all the work I've already put into it. It would ultimately help my steering angles out, but. Oh, I welded the snot out of those brackets. If I didn't have to use any pedals, man, I'm just, I'm, I'm boogieing, like I'm good. As it turns out, I'd like to be able to stop it and put it in gear. Hot rotten, baby. Since we're pretty accomplished in the art of going backwards, I popped these bolts out 
rehooked up our bungee cord and climbed myself in there and I, it is it's better so what we've done here is increase the angle of the dangle here we're close our windshield plane should be about here i mean it's functional here but i guess that's how you got to do it you know use yourself to fit everything just means we got to change all of our steering stuff it's fine it's fine this may be an award winner in the zip tie and bungee cord combination event. So I'm doing some experimenting on some butt risers. I keep raising the seat up and it turns out that, you know, the higher you sit, the more kind of ergonomical it gets. I guess less kind of crouched up on the ground. So this is not uncomfortable at all. I think we've solved kind of this issue. The higher up we are, the more room we have so for some shifter action between our legs there because we'll bend this over and get it up here passenger gets the short end of the stick this is probably as good enough a time as any to break some reality stuff to you guys if you're toiling away in your garage and you're thinking man the ladies are gonna love this thing they're just gonna be chicks everywhere let me tell you right now that is not the case old dudes at gas stations they'll wear you out chicks not so much but if it's the ladies you're after, you probably won't want some kind of luxury SUV where they can sit and text while you drive along. Just, reality's harsh. But as far as me goes, I need room for the dog, you know? So now, we just gotta redo all our steering and come up with a clutch. No problem. And I was thinking if I could get the clutch pedal right here, it would actually line up with our clutch fork right here. And in theory, if I can get the geometries right, we could eliminate the bell crank that goes up here. What I'm trying to figure out is whether or not we can mechanically operate this just by using a little nugget kind of like that coming off. So if the pedal pushes down this way, that would swing back and that would in theory pull our clutch fork back. The question is, Geometrically speaking, can we get enough movement to make this thing all party? And here's how we're figuring it out. We're starting with the clutch fork that already exists in there. And the point where it attaches to the throwout bearing, which is right yonder, to the pivot point, and the pivot point to this little poodle snapper where it gets pushed or pulled, depending on the situation, I've estimated that to be by measuring, basically we're about we're about three inches in this way and about seven inches out that way. So we're at about a 2.33 something clutch fork ratio. And I did find a clutch fork ratio that exists in Chevrolet's with a 2.36. So that's what we're gonna consider it. So 2.36 to one, which is the long side divided by the short side, which means for every 2.366 inches, essentially that we move this piece back here, we'll move this about one inch, but we don't need to move it one inch. I do think we need to be planning to move it about three quarters of an inch because it takes about a half inch to push in most clutch diaphragms. That's those little guys up there. I don't know what clutch this is. I got it with that busted motor. It was brand spanking new, so we just jammed it in here. So I'm gonna count on it being right around a half inch, which is pretty standard. Plus, we need a little bit of free play, like an eighth inch, so that's five eighths, and then I'm giving myself an eighth inch of eh, just a little extra because everything that's on a pivot point rotates. It doesn't just push straight down. It actually swings in an arc, which is different than just going like this. That's why I'm calculating we need three quarters of an inch of travel at the... Words? Words? Come on! Nope. Throw out bearing, three quarters of the throw out bearing. And then we're gonna work outwards and see if we can work all the way back to our pedal, still leaving ourselves a pedal ratio of at least 12 to one. There's a lot of ways to get there. We gotta use our thinking caps. Dog, what do you think? We gotta get this whoop de doo to move back an inch and three quarters, no matter what. There's several ways we can do it, but it's gotta go an inch and three quarters bam we're right back where we were with a similar pedal i mean basically if you look at it here this ratio this 40 degrees or whatever we had on the last pedal 
is pretty close. We probably just have to go about 50 degrees, 10 degrees more rotation with this ratio with the same. This is, remember, 12 inches, two inches, six to one pedal ratio. But with the clutch, that's not all. All right, hot rod mathematicians. This represented our overall entire pedal ratio because this part of the pedal connected right to the master, the master? The master cylinder. We had a six to one ratio operating the brake pedal. Now with the clutch, you got to multiply this ratio by every other ratio in the system. Now our goal is to use our pedal plus our clutch fork ratio, which we believe to be 2.36. So you multiply your six to one ratio times your 2.36 to one ratio, and you get something around 12 to one, plus a little more because of the points that I'm not adding up, right? So say we take all that information and then the internet tells us that a pressure plate takes 500 pounds to release. Well, that's fine, that's a lot. You gotta do your squats, or do you? Let's say we have a pedal ratio of 14 or above. Well, we can take that 500 pounds and divide it by 14, and we're gonna come up with something around 35 pounds of pressure from our big beefy legs. Now, if we reduce that pedal ratio to a 12 to one, we'll get closer to 41 pounds. And still, that's totally reasonable. But once you start decreasing that ratio, you can start increasing the amount of pressure you're going to have to supply. And before long, if you keep on doing it, your left leg is gonna be in tip top shape for an ass kicking contest because your clutch is gonna be real heavy. And believe you me, this is on my mind right now. This is very soon after Power Tour where I sat in a lot of traffic and my left leg got a workout in the pickup truck. So uh, I want this clutch pedal to be as, well, we're gonna go with user-friendly as possible. So I want the highest ratio I can get. Now, the one thing I skipped over is because of our clutch fork ratio and potentially because of our pedal ratio, if we can figure it out, basically lining up the geometry so it all work together, we won't be using one of these here things if it all works out in my favor. But if you are, you have to calculate this as well. So basically you'd have to divide this distance by this distance, get another ratio, multiply it all in order. I did find a reasonably good article on this recently and I'll put it down in the description so you guys can all review for yourselves. What the hell were we doing? All right, eyeball this with me. So here's the brake pedal, right? It's kinda close to in line height-wise to our clutch fork. After we've done all this mathematical stuff, in theory, if I can get this pedal as it rotates, like this one pushes backwards to push this brake booster in right there, if I can get this other pedal to rotate backwards and pull this clutch lever with the mechanical advantage we know we'll have, it has a chance of working without the bell crank. So. Now what we've got to do is turn this single pedal bracket into a two pedal bracket. Basic plan here. We got to hack all of this up so that we can slide another pedal all the way on to here. And then we'll need to make a bracket that comes in and holds this end. And then we'll use this fancy little thing to hold the pedal assembly to that part of the bracket. This part will stay welded on, pedal will slide on, pedal will slide on. Bob's your uncle. Um, they do sell something like that. Uh, the cheapest version I found is on eBay, and it's uh, it comes with the master cylinders even. It comes with this whole bracket, two pedals, master cylinder, and a clutch master cylinder for like, I think it's right around 300 bucks. That's a pretty good deal if you know that's what you need. This took many hours of discovery to get to this point. Time to put on some rock and roll and do the fast forward. I interrupt this high speed programming to show you this. I didn't have a good way of breaking off this little nug. Well, cutting it off. So I broke it off, right? And I thought you guys should see this. That's the weld. And if you're saying where, I understand. 
if we dive in right here, that's the remainder of the weld. So when it's all painted or powder coated or whatever it is, it looks like there might be a weld here. But the reality is there's little to nothing on this bracket. Kind of how thick that paint is. There's no weld on the inside. That's just all paint or powder coating, which means that little nug of weld is really, really all there is to it. I have been raving about the quality of this thing just because of how this was built, but apparently I should take 10% off of that. All right, two pedals where there used to be one. I uh, went ahead and cut all this off because Rewelding it is probably a better idea, and we don't need all that razzmatazz. Progress, maybe. Making a mess, absolutely. Made a little spacer, and I mean, it was, if I'd known how unelegant it was gonna be in the process, I'd have brought you along. It involved a sawzall and a sander, and melting the nylon into itself and back together, and a jigsaw. Both pedals fit on here correctly. Uh, this kind of covers the crunchy welded section. So now we gotta build a bracketry that will hold all of this in place. Nylon disaster, general disaster. Because I'm going to have to take this apart 300 more times, if I unbolt this and I unbolt this and I unbolt this, the back half of this bracket will come off and we can slide the pedals out, which we are guaranteed going to need to do. I'm going to edit all that together and pretend like this didn't take hours. So the alignments, this is actually pretty darn good. I'm happy with this alignment. I would love this to come down about a half an inch um, just to get the center of this travel kind of with the center of this one. I just, it's my experience on those ball pivots that are in the transmission or in the bell housing. It likes to pull or push straight. Well, they'll, they'll rack and that's not good. And then they bind and they drag and all this other stuff. So we either have to lower this a half inch or we have to uh, extend this a half inch. And right now I'd rather lower this a half inch because I don't see a reason why not. Tiniest bit of overhang right here, but don't worry, that's not a problem at all. Oh wait, no, yeah, it's, it's exactly, it's, it's, it's absolutely in the way. Gang, we've got exhaust parts and gaskets and steering shaft and all that jazz. And last time I checked, we were working on a pedal assembly. So that's a long way of saying we're getting our butt whooped right now. If you like, I got to mock up a pipe to go on the bottom of that header. See if we can tuck the exhaust away. Then we'll need to look at adjusting the steering shaft to see where that would go around that exhaust because right now we've got some options on where this clutch pedal should go, but they're in, you know, I would say pretty dependent on where the steering shaft actually ends up. There is not much room here. We can cut all this out and make some room. <laughs> this is, this is, this is the essence of it all. If I survive the driver's side controls on this hot rod, I feel like we're gonna go from stumbling backwards downhill to like racing right along. At least I'm telling myself that because I try to remember the Independence Day speech in my head and I couldn't and I just I need some motivation because this is hard. <laughs> and it's not working and I don't know if you guys can tell but the sun's more closer well it's actually really close to going down it's a beautiful day but we've been in the garage for about nine hours so far and it is still counting why did i come over here dang it all right exhaust dang I'm just watching the squirrels out there it is a beautiful evening at this point and i'm getting my butt kicked I'm trying not to think about it too hard because I'm not even sure if we're breaking even at this point. We had to adjust the steering. <laughs> and uh, so that's now undone. And we kind of have a brake pedal idea, but we got a clutch 
issue that we've got to figure out, meaning where the pedal goes, but that's got to go around the steering, which has to go around the exhaust. So, and they all take priority. They must live in harmony, but it's kind of like they're all the Hatfields and McCoys at this point. They just don't want to get along. All right. I'm saying all right, like I got a plan. I don't, I don't have a plan. Need a plan. Need a plan. Be like if I just went to Lake Pipes, my problems would be much smaller. Right now. Future me would have different problems, but right now, right now me would have a problem solved. I jam this fella on, it's bigger and more honkiner than what we're probably going to use, and it's sort of headed straight back, which is kind of worst case scenario for what we're doing, because it could tuck in and do all kind of dumb stuff if we have to make it do it. Because we've adjusted, adjusted our steering, I'm going to make a new set of conduit steering shafts because I feel like the angles of our dangles can be more better -er. Nope. I didn't quit you. We don't need a lot of clearance. We just need clearance. So this is actually a much better looking system than we had before. So I will take that as a win. Not that, you know, a thousand steering joints are good looking. It's better than it was. Now you can kind of eyeball in here and the clutch is kind of lined up with it, but obviously for the ergonomics of our feet and us being humans, the brake and the clutch want to be further apart anyway. The bottom of the pedal is aligned kind of the way I want it to be. I am tired. T I double er duh. So we climbed in, we climbed out. The pedal's got to go two inches that away, but that's going to be metal work. But in addition to all of that, this dingle hopper is in the middle of its travel while the pedal is at the end for our particular car. So the way these things are clocked is going to have to ch -ch 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 change. Time to pull all this apart, see if the system works and we can get it apart inside the car and get the pedals out. So this should come out, two bolts, this assembly should come off and hopefully, hopefully the time spent cogitating on that, it's gonna pay off. So I decided to jam the brake pedal in there to see just if the general arrangement would kind of work and it looks like it will. So we'll start by matching that and kind of mocking it up. It also occurred to me while I was messing with it, looking at the total travel I need because I need more travel for the clutch. If I increase the length of this arm on the bottom for the clutch, well, the same whatever 40 or 50 degree sweep will actually create more distance over the same sweep. It will change my ratio a little bit, but that's probably okay. I think I have the mechanical advantage here still. I hope I have the mechanical advantage here still. Well gang, we got a bent pedal. It's all cobbled together, you see. But I'm gonna jam these things in here and then we're probably gonna call it a day because we're hitting the witching hour. Witching hour is when I can feel that I'm pretty tired. I smell like a Sasquatch. I'll start to not handle frustration very well. And that will result in me breaking things or hurting myself or both, sometimes in exactly the same maneuver. It might have worked actually. I wonder if uh, Jolene tells old bad Chad when he's done for the day, it's like, you're done, eh? Come have a Molson, eh? Uh, Jolene doesn't sound like that. Do Canadians drink Molson? Is that real? Let's see if that works. I still think our pedal math works out by my very scientific, generalized looking at it. We'll see you guys in a two second time travel. It is bright and early. Got a cup of little brown dog coffee. Feels like Groundhog Day. The future is now. We have time traveled. This is always critical. Today's us who is yesterday's future us now has to assess the work of yesterday's us to see if the work we did was garbage. And if we had like lost our minds, or if we were actually onto something.
Nah, that might be okay. But we've said that before. Yep, steering wheel's a little sillier. I actually was watching the Three Stooges last night, and they drive a lot of like early touring cars around because, well, touring cars are funny. So their steering wheels were way up high and leaned way forward. It creates so much more room for the old knees. So uh, despite my super cool racer driving steering wheel thing, this is uh, this is just better. I need this coffee to kick in because it's lovely at eight something this morning on a Sunday. However, it's gonna get hot. We're gonna be melting like an ice cream before we know it. Gang, if I told you that I didn't spend the first half hour of this lovely morning just looking for my notebook that has my notes on it from yesterday, I'd be lying to you. How do you lose a legal pad? I don't know how, but I did it. See it? I just raised the lift, <laughs> and there it is. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, guys, it's gonna be a day. Have I mentioned I'm getting my butt whooped? Four hours of Cinderella, the shoe fits, Goldilocks, three bears, porridge, not quite hot enough. I mean, I have moved this thing fractions of an inch in so many directions. We're about to try a brand new one. Four hours. We're nowhere, gang. Nowhere. Gang, I don't know what I did to anger the mechanical clutch fairies. There has been blood sacrifice. I've done mathematics. I had a cappuccino and still nothing. And finally, finally, I think we're on to something. Obviously that's not actuating the clutch, but I think I got the travel I need. I think I got the room. I'm gonna adjust the pedal off to the this side a little bit. The whole pivot point needed to go down and back. Like I don't love that angle, but I think it'll work. I think it'll work. I think it'll work. I need it to work. Great. Googly moogly. I wonder what would happen if I came back up. Why do I even ask these questions? Wow. <sighs> Gang, we're sneaking up on it. We have a clutch pedal that kind of functions, a brake pedal that might need a little bit more fine tuning based on our new pivot placement. All we had to do was modify everything. Move the steering, move the brake booster, but we're not quite there yet. The clutch pedal still needs some modifications. So we're gonna get after that. Making a thing, making a thing. Is it gonna work? Nope, probably not. So we went ahead and 86 this guy, made some marks while this was in the car to find the center of the travel, the swing. And then we made this other piece here it doesn't seem like much, but you know, yeah, I could have gotten those in a straight line. But if history tells us anything, other people have been much better at this than me. Each one of these three holes represents a significant adjustment in the pedal ratio, not even joking. Originally, this pedal was set up as a six to one ratio, 12 inches from the center of the pivot to the pedal, and then two inches, so 12 divided by two is six. By moving this to two and a quarter inches, that effectively lowers the pedal ratio to five, which is correct because our clutch fork is 2.36. So you multiply all of that together and uh, we're getting just over a 12 to one ratio all in, but you got to calculate the sums of all your parts. Here's our new repositioned hanger downer guy. So basically the idea and the goal was that the center of the travel right there would be in the center of our clutch pedal travel, right? There we go, because that is gonna have a link that pulls on this guy right here. So we're aiming for as much of a straight line as we possibly can. So the arc goes a little bit down and then it's at the lowest point and then a little bit up and then a little bit down, then a little bit up, as opposed to how it used to be, which was like this, which was just pulling down, down, down. See, see how that is? Look like a music video right now. Whew. 
So I just went to the hardware store and struck out. I was gonna try to build some linkage stuff for connecting our master cylinder to our pedal and our clutch fork to our clutch pedal. Now, that's fine. It was good to get out of the garage. We took a ride in the Jeep, the old YJ that we had in the shop not too long ago, getting a gas tank. And I'll tell you what, you know, riding classic cars is fun. And if you don't think a late 80s Jeep is a classic car, go for a ride in one because it is an entirely different experience than anything made after the year 2000, probably even a little bit before. And a far cry from, you know, uh, any kind of new car. There's bumps in the road, you get to shift it, doesn't have a top on it, doesn't have doors on it. It's a lot of fun. The moral of the story, you see, is that uh, I think after the last couple of days hammering away on this, riding in a classic convertible and genuinely enjoying myself was a little bit motivation because, you know, this will be one of those one day. So let's take a let's review. Let's see what we did. Said it before, I will say it again. The driver's side of a hot rod is just the briar patch, man. It is the shoals, it is the shallows, it is the place you may run aground. And we've run aground over and over and over and over and patched it back up. It just, there's a lot of stuff that has to happen in here. Pedals, steering, exhaust, shifters. Your specific recipe, well, you're gonna have to cipher through those options to figure out what works best for you. The good news for us is we now have a functioning pedal assembly prototype. We've got linkages and all of that stuff to build, but the geometry works out and the ergonomics work out. We just had to change everything else. Basically, we ended up moving the steering column so that that column drop's gotta get rebuilt. The steering shafts have to get redone, which isn't that big a deal. We jam some exhaust starter pieces in there so we know that that might clear. We think we did the math to eliminate the bell crank, but it would still fit if we needed it, so that's good to know. We moved our brake booster back significantly to fit all of this stuff, which clears out more room for the shifter, which is good. The sacrifice we're making here is, that means filling the master cylinder, we're gonna have to lift the seat up. Not a big deal. It will be a huge pain when we go to bleed the brakes, but after that, general maintenance, if we do things right after the initial finding all of the leaks we're guaranteed to have, that ought to be, you know, okay. Sometimes, fellas, it's the things you think you thought about that really get you. Um, I thought I'd taken the pedals and everything into consideration when I put the steering column in and built the first set of steering shaft everything. And in fact, I did. I did have room for the pedals, but the way the ergonomics worked out, my monkey knees kept hitting the steering wheel when I was trying to actuate the pedals in all of their mock-up phases. And, you know, it's all gotta be there to figure it out. Everything's kind of owning the real estate that it needs to own right now, which is pretty significant. That's the battle we've been fighting. That's the whole thing. It's like the land grab for all of these mechanisms. Now, connecting the parts and pieces and the linkages, that's not easy, but it's easy compared to what we just did. This channel has always been about showing the process, which is by process, what I mean is the mistakes that are made along the way that we learn from to learn that our first plan was not going to work, but taking what we got out of doing that first plan, figuring out how to modify it to a more potentially successful solution or solution with a higher potential for success. About That's about all we can hope for here. I don't cut out any of that stuff because that's, that's what hot rodding is, right? It's figuring it out. It's making the mistakes and then the thought process and the engineering or the fabrication or the research or whatever it is that gets you past the hurdle. Because what we're doing here is putting a bunch of parts together that have never meant to be together. It doesn't matter how many people have done it before us. It doesn't, it like, I could try to build this car over again. It would not be the same set of problems. It'd be a slightly different set of problems. This video represents over 20 hours of work on this car. Like, not kidding at all. A lot of that was thinking, doing math, drawing pictures of math, 
And then everything else was just hours and hours of putting stuff in the car, moving it an inch, a half an inch, small adjustments, just tweaking it until the ergonomics worked. And I kind of just want you to know that because it's, it's a lot of work. And uh, yet nobody needs to see shifting of one thing 382,000 different times. But if you're out there and you're fighting that battle, it, it's happening to everybody. That's gonna do it for this episode of Between the Sharks. Good luck on your projects out there. If you've made it this far, please consider subscribing because really that's the only way to grow this channel is if you guys dig it enough to click the subscribe button. It's totally free. I won't call you during dinner time. I won't try to sell you anything, but it does help me out a whole lot. Hope this helped you out and we'll see you next time on Between the Sharks.